Hello and welcome back to my channel. Here is another yoga for MMA practice, which today we'll be focusing particularly on balances, especially on our feet. So a lot of stability work here, as well as just controlling movements. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to listen to music, then I have linked a playlist in the description below. So feel free to check that out as well. Otherwise, let's get straight into it. So beginning with cat and cow on our hands and knees. So inhaling to look up and then exhaling to round the back and look down. Just do this with your own breathing pattern. So inhaling and exhaling with nice long deep breaths just to get easing into the body as we warm it up. Okay, so come into a neutral spine and then just creating circles with the body. Although it wasn't freezing today, it is still winter in the UK and I did feel the need to move to warm up quite a bit. So taking so many circles in one direction and then circling in another direction, a great way of warming up the wrists as well as warming up the spine, hips and so much more. Of course, this all fours position relates quite similarly to jiu-jitsu and wrestling positions. Okay, so swapping the hands around so that our hands are facing towards us and then doing the same kind of circles, maybe slightly smaller now, just to take it easy on your wrists. And if it feels like too much pressure on your wrists, then swap your hands around as you had them before and just continue the circles. So make sure you go both ways and really just be present of the sensations you're feeling, especially in the wrists. Okay, so shaking them to wrists out, just letting some blood through there. And then you're going to lift your knees off the ground a couple inches and we're going to do our sit-throughs. So as our right leg comes out, our left hand will come off the ground and vice versa. So make sure it's your opposite leg kicking through and under and then your opposite hand will come off the ground and help engage in the twist a bit more. So notice I'm doing this quite slowly so I get a good nice control over the movement whilst I practice this. Once you've done about three each side, come back to a central position then coming into your first downward facing dog, pointing your toes and pushing your heels back to the ground, creating as much of an upward V position as possible. Then we're going to roll through to a plank position and then roll back into a downward dog. So nice body rolls here, warming up the whole body, especially the shoulders here, both through controlling the movement and opening them up through this position. Once you've done this a couple of times, come back to downward dog position, holding it here, then walk, step or jump to the front of your mat into a yoga squat, rolling out your wrists. Of course, this is a great position to warm up your wrists as well as opening up your hips and ankles, keeping a nice straight spine if possible for your classic yoga multitasking stretches. Now using your hands for support, you're going to sit to one side and bring yourself as low as possible to the ground for a little hip mobility work. And then you're going to come back to the squat and go to the other side, repeating this forward fold if this feels accessible to you. So use the hands as much as you need to support you as you transition through the yoga squat to the other side, almost like you're swiveling your hips here to create the motion. As you get used to this movement, try to add breath to movement if you're not already. So exhaling as you fold forward and inhaling as you transition through to the other side. So now return back to your yoga squat, then come to a ragdoll position, folding your upper body forwards and adding a slight bend to the knees 
to get a bit deeper into the stretch, releasing out that lower back. Release any excessive tension you might be holding in your jaw or neck, just letting everything go here, using gravity to get deeper into the stretch. Okay, so now slowly roll your body all the way up to standing. And then we're going to find ourselves at the top of our mat, feet together. Heels can have a slight distance between them. And then you're going to bring your left knee to your chest and try to bring it as tight to your left armpit as possible. And this is a great moment to roll out your ankle if you wish to do so. Now grab your knee with your right hand and then release the grip with your left hand and start to extend it behind you for a twisting position. You want to keep your hips facing forwards but then twist with your upper body out to the side and this should be quite a nice feeling as well as adding to the balance. Okay, so swap into the other side, bring your right knee into your chest, possibly rolling out your ankle as you do this. I'm going to be honest with you guys, this session was particularly difficult, especially for the balances. So this is a nice way of preparing for the later balances to come. Okay, so grabbing your right knee now with your left hand and then letting go with your right hand so that you can twist out to the side. Try and keep your lower body and hips facing forwards as you twist to the side. Once you've done this, coming forwards, releasing both feet back to the ground and preparing for our sun salutations. Inhale, lift both hands up to the sky. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, flat back. Then exhale walk, step or jump to a plank position, then chaturanga all the way down to the ground and you're going to do your cobras just to warm up the spine. So not coming all the way up just yet, just almost rolling halfway up, just as far as feels good for your body. Now push back into an all fours position as we were in earlier. So preparing for our sit throughs, lifting our knees off the ground and then sitting through and coming back to central, sitting through and coming back to central. So just repeating the same process as we did earlier and have fun with this. Just explore the movement speed and how fast or slowly you want to do this. Neither way being better than the other way. Just do what you think is best for your body. Okay, so this time we're going to do something slightly different. So we're going to sit through as we did previously. Then we're going to base out into an inverted all fours position. Then kick our leg through again. And we should come into a crawling kind of position. And once we get here, we're going to just crawl side to side along our mat keeping our body as parallel to the ground as possible to making it a bit more of a challenge, making sure our hips don't raise up too much either. Okay, so now we're going to return back. So sit through, base in an inverted position, then kick your leg through again and adjust position to repeat onto the other side. So sit through, kick through, come to a crawl position and once again going side to side maybe even crossing your hand over the top to add a bit more balance into this crawl of course in jiu-jitsu and mixed martial arts it's important to have good core balance especially in these kind of primal movements as a lot of it is to do with using your body and being able to control your body weight. So returning back, sit through, kick through, back to this all fours position, and we're gonna sit back into a child's pose, reconnecting to our breathing if we've lost it, and letting our body just rest for a moment before we get into our main sequence.
Okay, let's do this. So coming into a downward dog position, make sure you try to make this as much of an upside down V as possible. If you have a mirror, this is a great way of checking this. So lifting our right leg off the ground for a three-legged dog, we're going to inhale, touch our right elbow, then exhale, kick back up. Inhale, touch our nose, exhale, kick back up. Inhale, touch our opposite elbow, kick back up, and then place our foot between our hands to come into a low lunge position. So a lot of movement just there, a lot of core, but nevertheless, try to keep your breath connected with your movement. Don't worry about the speed I'm going at, just go at the speed that works best for you. Okay, so sitting back, both knees off the ground into our pyramid pose, trying to keep our back as flat as possible and our hips square to the front of the mat. Then you're going to inhale up to a high lunge position this time, meaning our left knee is off the ground, keeping a good posture and focus. And here we go. So bringing our left knee up into the air as if we're kneeing someone. Then we're going to kick back into somewhat of a warrior three and flow back into the knee position. So kicking back warrior three, then coming up for our knee. And if you want to get more technical about it for striking, you would point the toes downwards as you do the knee to get a bit more technique there. This time, bring your knee to your chest once you've come back to the knee position. And then we're going to do a twist like earlier. So holding on to our knee with our right hand, twisting out to the side. And I can tell you I was feeling the burn in my ankle already by this point. But there's still a couple more balances to come. So just be prepared for this. So coming to our half moon position and do whatever variation that serves your body best. So if this variation isn't the best pose for you, then you can always look for extra support by adding blocks on the floor and other kind of methods like this. Bring your knee to your chest now and we're going to prepare to do some side kicks slowly out to the side. Now I found this particularly tricky and I've been doing martial arts for a long time so don't worry if you wobble around doing this, it's a very tricky exercise. Focus on doing these kicks as controlled as possible so if you find yourself struggling in a certain part of the motion then this is the part that you need to focus on the most. Okay so coming into our high lunge cross facing the back of our mat, sitting down deeply into this cross, almost as if we're imagining to duck under someone else's punch. Windmill open your left hand, and we're going to come into a reverse triangle pose, so both legs nice and straight here, trying to add a side bend, then straight forward into a triangle pose, once again, keeping ourselves as flat as possible, we want to be able to fit between two small walls. So try to make yourself almost on purposely thin here. Remember your breathing, your deep breathing. This is what's going to aid you in these stretches. Then coming down to a low lunge and then into plank. Chaturanga, this time to upward dog, but feel free to do a cobra like we did earlier, if this feels more comfortable, then into your downward dog position, we'll all meet here. And repeating the same side, to come back to facing forwards, right leg comes up into the air, touching the right elbow, kicking back up, touching your nose, kicking back up, then crossing over and touching the left elbow, kicking back up, and finally placing your foot between your hands for your low lunge position and breathe.
on an exhale place both hands onto the ground and we're going to come into our pyramid pose folding forwards trying to keep a nice long flat back of course this is quite difficult to achieve if you've got tight hamstrings but it's a great way of stretching it from here inhale come to a high lunge position breathing once again maybe even cracking a smile just to enjoy the practice as much as possible then we're gonna knee and kick back as we did earlier exactly the same sequence on exactly the same side so just getting used to this motion i know your ankle is burning right now i know these balances are difficult but continue just flowing through and you'll reap the benefits okay so bringing your knee to your chest and then preparing to twist out to the side by holding your knee with your right hand and twisting your left hand out to the side maybe even looking that direction but i know that can be a bit disorientating especially during these long sequence of balances okay so coming into our half moon placing our right hand onto the ground and then kicking out our left leg as high as possible engaging the adductor muscles then we're going to come up preparing to do our side kicks with nice and slow control practicing every little small movement within the kick ensuring our foot's flexed so that ideally the heel would be hitting our opponent if we were to actually throw this kick okay so the last kick here and i was wobbling all over the place here if that makes you feel a bit better and then we're going to come into our high lunge with a cross facing the front of the mat once again just holding this position i remember doing this a lot in karate so I got used to this low lunge position, despite it still not being the most pleasant of poses. Okay, so reversing your triangle pose, looking up to the sky if this feels comfortable, and then coming into our triangle pose, placing our left hand onto the ground, shin, ankle, wherever feels comfortable. Just make sure you stretch out to the side, Open your hips to the side as well. You might even feel a nice release in your hamstring as you do this pose. Come through to a plank position, chaturanga to upward dog, or maybe a cobra position, and we'll return into downward dog. Okay, so repeating on the other side, lifting the left leg up for a three-legged dog, then touching the left knee to your left elbow, lifting back up, then to your nose, exhale, and then to your opposite knee on the inhale. Then placing your foot between your hands, coming to the low lunge position, exhaling and dropping both hands to the mat then kicking up into our pyramid pose remembering to keep our hips as square to the front as possible and a nice flat back if this is more accessible to you on an inhale coming to a high lunge position finding your drishti or your balance point preparing for the sequence that is to come so lifting your right knee this time up into the air then kicking back through a th warrior three position then flowing between this once again if you want a bit more detail point the toe downwards as you throw the knee and this will create a better knee shape 
in a realistic fighting situation. Otherwise, keep a good control over the motion. And once you've done so many, you're going to bring your knee to your chest and prepare to twist out to the side from here. So this time, right hand comes out to the side with your left hand holding onto the knee firmly. Once again, it's optional to look behind you, but it's a great way of adding an extra challenge to the balance. And then come into a half moon position, so placing your left hand onto the ground, opening your hips to the side. Very challenging this pose, and it doesn't help that we're now we're going to do the slow side kicks. So once again, just find your focus, smile, and then we'll do this. So slow side kicks out to the side. I struggled once again very much when I was doing these side kicks. With the sequence of balances, it's quite difficult. But remember just to focus on the quality of the movement. So nice and slowly, realizing where you might have to work on. Then come into a high lunge cross facing the back of our mat, holding this position, sinking through and releasing a bit of the tension of holding that balance on your ankle. Reverse triangle pose, so side bend backwards, left hand can touch onto your back leg for a bit of assistance, then triangle stretching forwards as much as possible then looking to touch the ground shin ankle wherever suits best looking up to the sky if possible opening out your shoulder and hip to the side and of course breathe windmill your arms down to the floor both hands placed down then kicking back into a high lunge, chaturanga of your choice, to upward dog, and then we'll all meet in a downward dog position, repeating this sequence for the last time on the left hand side. So lifting up your left leg once again for a three legged dog, touching the same side knee, then kicking up knee to nose, kick up, Knee to opposite elbow, kick up, then place the foot between your hands. Once again, low lunge position. Really try to come as deep as possible into this now. Just make sure that your front knee isn't overshooting your foot. Make sure that the ankle and knee is well aligned. Letting your hips sink down into the ground. Then transition into your pyramid pose, feeling this across the hamstring, which is some area that becomes really tight, doing a lot of mixed martial arts. So it's important to stretch this out. Then coming into our high lunge position, holding here, adding a bit of leg strength. And now for the final killer balance sequence, bringing your right knee up, then kicking back through to warrior three and just flowing through the sequence about three times with control. If you fall out, just come straight back into it. No problem whatsoever. Okay, so last time and then bringing your knee to your chest for an extra little bit of stretch. Then we're going to twist out to the side. Looking back maybe if possible. Hold, but don't hold your breath. Remember to breathe. <laughs> And then come into a half moon position, left hand touches the ground, maybe looking up to the sky once again. And for a final part, bringing the knee to your chest 
and doing our slow side kicks from here. So just about three quality slow kicks. I'm starting to rush a little bit, but I don't want you to do that as well. Do this nice and slowly. And then we're going to come back to the ground into our high lunge cross. Well done, guys. That was not an easy one. And my facial expression was hiding a lot of the pain. So good work, guys. And now we're going to come into the final part of the sequence. So reversing the triangle, twisting out sideways. Then reach your right arm forwards into a triangle pose, releasing that right hamstring out, especially here. So a lot of the kicking and the movements in jiu-jitsu and wrestling can cause tightness. And with the leg locks and stuff, we want to try to have as much looseness in our body as possible. Come down to plank, chaturanga, to upward dog or cobra. Then we're going to sit back in our child's pose. Good work. You've earned this little rest here. And just reconnect to your deep breathing, melting into the pose. Okay, so for our final little core workout, we are going to repeat what we did earlier with our sit-throughs. So first of all, we're just going to do our sit-throughs on either side. Once again, the speed you go at is up to you. I decided to go fairly slowly to focus on control, but if you wish to blast through this quickly, then as long as the motion is accurate, then feel free to do so. Okay, so now preparing to sit through, then come to an inverted position, then kick through, coming into our crawling position, now facing the side of our mat and crawling side to side from here. If you've got more space, then feel free to move even further, of course, but just keeping our hips as low to the ground as possible to make it a bit more of a challenge. Once we return to a central position, then we're going to sit through, come to an inverted position, then kick through and return back to where we were originally. Once again, sit through, inverted position, kick through and come to a side crawl position the other way this time. So by no means not an easy transition. But once you get it, it's a bit of fun and it can be quite applicable to grappling movements as it is a body weight movement here and allows you to transition from one base to another base. Once you come back to the center of the mat, we're going to sit through, then invert, kick through, and return back to our original position. And we're gonna actually do a couple crawls forwards and backwards to add this little last bit to our core. So getting that final bit into our workout from here. Maybe if you've got not much space, I went with smaller crawls, but if you've got more space, of course, feel free to move even further through the space that you've been provided. Okay, so come to stillness, final little push, just holding this position out. Probably feeling this in the core right now. And release, good work. So come into a child's pose once again, letting go of any tension. Breathe deeply, got a bit of time here just to relax.
slowly coming back into a downward dog position. Walk your ankles out, so just pedaling out your feet, maybe bending one knee and then the other knee. I know my calves get really tight during mixed martial arts sessions, so it's a great way of just releasing out any excessive tension that's still remaining near the end of our class. Walk, step or jump to the front of the mat into our yoga squat once again and then rolling our wrists out as we did at the start of our session both directions maybe doing any stretch that feels good for your body so just feel free to go through any sort of wrist stretch you could follow along with what I'm doing swapping the grips over whatever works best for you the prayer position in itself is quite a good one you can reverse the prayer position for more wrist stretches once you've done this all just shake it all out just shake 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 it all away then we're going to sit down to one side as we did previously and then swap this time using as minimal help from our hands as possible. So just using what we need to push back up and then come from one side to the other side, just swiveling our hips side to side once again. If you're gonna do this without your hand, be very careful of your knees. So make sure you got good strength and it's coming from the core. Don't force it. I definitely needed my hand just to help me a little bit to sit up. But you can also just control the motion downwards without the hands, which can be a bit of a challenge in itself. Okay, so sitting down, folding forwards, just getting a bit of a stretch into this on the final turns round. Swapping sides, swiveling over to the other side and folding forwards. This is great for stretching out the hips or releasing any sciatic pain you might be experiencing. And it's quite easily accessible, maybe a bit easier than the traditional pigeon pose that's done in yoga. Final breaths before sitting up into your squat malasana position. And then we're going to sit back and rock forwards and backwards, massaging out our back. Often we don't use the ground enough. And this is an example for a great way of massaging the lower back. Bring your nose to our knees for a nice tight squeeze. Then whilst keeping your right knee bent, extend your left leg out to the ground. If this is a bit too intense, then you can always keep your left foot on the ground and bent. Then we're going to cross our right knee across our body onto the other side. And then our right hand is going to extend out for a twist to finish off the class. Keep breathing. Don't forget to breathe in this twist to get deeper into the position. Focusing on exhaling any excessive tension. Okay, so slowly bring your knees back to central, tucking into a tight ball once again. This time keeping your left knee tight and your right leg extended. However you did previously, repeat this again to keep the balance. This time extend your left hand to the ground and then twist your knee over to the right hand side for the opposite side twist. I encourage you to shut your eyes as it closes to this practice to feel the sensations in the body as we draw closer to Shavasana.
Okay, so bring both knees back to central slowly and maybe rocking side to side to massage our lower back or creating circles with our knees as well can be a great way of massaging the lower back especially going both directions once you've done what feels good maybe you've got an extra couple of movements that could help end the class then feel free to do those otherwise come into our final shavasana otherwise known as corpse pose so find a comfortable position on the ground lying down here shutting the eyes not focusing on the breathing just resting in our final position thank you for watching thank you for all the support I've noticed that a lot of people have been giving me great feedback on these yoga for MMA videos and I really appreciate that. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time for another video. Peace.